Welcome to Insights Live. I'm Rebecca Selby, and right now I'm joined by Cindy Jutras of Mint Jutras. Cindy, how have you been doing? I'm great. Yes, it's great to sit down with you again. We always value your insight as an analyst because we know you do a lot of research and you really keep your finger on the pulse of industry trends. What are you seeing these days? Well, Rebecca, one of the things I'm seeing is some change and, and some resurgence in growth. And I suspected that was the case. So. Every year I do an annual enterprise solution study survey. And this year I put some specific questions in about growth. And what were the findings that you found that stood out? Well, I think the, the first thing that stood out was that it confirmed my suspicions that growth is back. And I asked the question to, to confirm that in two different ways. One was very subjective. It was asking them to describe their growth potential in the near, in the near future. Mm -hmm. and, and that was just a, a subjective from aggressive down to minimal or no growth. And what I found was that it was your classic bell-shaped curve. Oh, interesting. With the peak at moderate and trailing off to aggressive to minimal or no. And it was important to ask that question because depending on the size of the company, asking the percentage growth, which I also did, and I'll share with that in a minute, is, is deceiving because a very tiny company, if they grow five or 10 percent, they're not moving the needle. A very large company, five or ten percent is very significant. Massive impact. So it's really a question of how do you perceive your growth. Then we combine that with percentages of actual growth the last over the last two fiscal years, the projected growth over the next two fiscal years, and also the change in profitability. Because quite frankly, growth without profits isn't sustainable. What was very interesting and a little um, almost unbelievable was the percentage average growth that was projected, and it was around the 13, 14 percent. Wow. That's what, what do I you said. attribute that to? Well, I started looking to cut the data different ways. Was it just all small companies? Was it a certain industry sector? And none of that really, really answered the question. Yes, smaller companies were growing faster percentage-wise than larger companies, but it, not significantly so. One sector, manufacturing versus distribution versus retail versus services, didn't really tell me much. I hit on one factor that was eye-opening, and that was I segmented the companies into high-growth companies and everyone else. So using those metrics, I took the top 15%, the fastest-growing companies, and there was the difference. What did the they top, all have in common? The top 15% were, had grown 46% on average, were projecting a 43%. But everyone else, it was 7%, which is really what I expected. So it was those high growth companies that were really skewing the overall average. What do you think those high growth companies were doing differently? Well, I think one of the things that's interesting in terms of opportunity for growth is that there are unprecedented opportunities for growth today. And it's really because the internet has leveled the playing field for global presence. It's actually shown us that new, new economies are emerging, new middle classes are emerging. But they're not, even though even small companies can establish a global presence and, and a global brand, Operating globally is much more challenging. It's just a different world out there. So not everyone's taking advantage of that or can take advantage of it. What's interesting is the same things that are presenting more opportunities 
are also presenting more challenges. Well, let's and talk a little bit about that. What opportunities are you seeing for some of these businesses? Well, it, what's interesting is I asked, you know, when you really think about it, there's only a few different ways companies can grow. They can either come up with new and innovative products, or they can sell more of what they already have. Now, selling more what they already have may mean they do a better job marketing, they get a higher share of their own customer's wallet, they expand domestically or expand internationally. What's interesting is most people still think that their biggest opportunity for growth is new and innovative products. But not everyone's capable of coming up with those new and innovative products. So I think they're missing the, the potential for that global expansion or even their domestic expansion or just better marketing efforts. Do you think that having the ability to work faster and more intelligently would help those companies that can't necessarily expand by adding to their product line do ex to experience growth? It's interesting because when I asked about challenges mm -hmm. to growth, the number one challenge by far was economic factors that were outside of their control. So in a way they're saying, well, you know, not much we can do. But then if you look at the next three challenges, there is something they can do. One is they're limited in capacity. Um, and, and whereas the ability to market and support that from a software standpoint requires less capital investment investment because of the internet and the cloud, if in fact they need to produce more physical product, then they may be limited by capital and, and by capacity. The next highest was a limited skills, um, which we're hearing a lot today. You know, unemployment is way down, and yet we don't necessarily have the right, the right skills. Well, and it's such the, a changing workforce, too. Exactly. The third one, after the, the economic factors, was their inability to manage change. And that's where speed and efficiency really comes into play. It makes sense. Thank you so much for the overview of some of the opportunities and challenges that companies are seeing. Any other tidbits you want to leave us with? No, I think just the, the fact that, that look beyond the traditional forms of growth. Um, growth may come from entirely different areas than having new and innovative products and take advantage of that, that changing world, the global digital economy. Absolutely. At Epicor, we very, very clearly recognize that growth looks different to different companies and they have to recognize what their biggest opportunity is and go for it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you, Rebecca. If you'd like more information on any of the things that we've discussed today, please visit epicor.com.